The Conservation Department treats rare books, documents, and artworks from all of Columbia's special collections. The staff includes three professional conservators who bring specialized training to their work of treating some of the library's most valuable holdings. The conservators combine traditional craft skills with knowledge of new technology and current scientific research. To help in the work of caring for Columbia's artifacts, the library's laboratory provides modern equipment, such as the microscope this conservator is using to examine the paint layers of a medieval manuscript, as well as tools and supplies that would be familiar to a bookbinder of the 16th century. We'll look at some examples of treatments frequently performed in Columbia's lab. This drawing on fragile tracing paper arrived with tears and old adhesive tape. Conservators mend tears in artworks and documents using handmade paper. The paper's special long fibers strengthen the area around a tear. It is applied with a natural adhesive that can be reversed in water. The conservator carefully monitors the moisture in the paste and uses blotting paper to control how the mend dries. Depending upon the condition of the document, this work can take minutes or many hours. The leaves of a book may be removed from their binding to be washed if the condition of the paper is very poor. Washing is done in purified and pH balanced water using sheets of webbing to support the wet leaves in the bath. Historic papers may be acidic due to their manufacture and poor storage in past centuries. This acidity can cause paper to break down and become brittle. In the bath, products of acidic reactions are washed away, resulting in a cleaner and more permanent sheet after washing, compared to an unwashed sheet. This treatment improves the chemical stability of the paper, as well as the appearance. Conservators test inks carefully before washing. In this case, the ink from a stamp would have bled in the bath, so it is masked with clear film to protect it, while the rest of the leaf is washed on a suction table. The suction pulls water from the damp blotting paper directly through the book leaf and prevents it moving into the area of the stamp. These book leaves are sewn as bookbinders have done since the Middle Ages. The natural linen sewing thread is passed through the folds of paper and around tensioned linen cords on a sewing frame. Conservators must identify evidence to be preserved, such as this folded corner, which indicates the size of the original sheet of paper used to print this book. The conservator judges the thickness of thread to use when sewing, since this controls the shape of the finished book once it is bound. When a book lacks a suitable cover, the conservator will rebind it. For this treatment, the most appropriate style for the new binding was a full leather cover made with specially tanned leather. The leather edges are paired with a razor-sharp knife, and the conservator judges how much to thin the skin to suit the size of the book, using a tool called a spokeshave she has modified for leather work. When the paste is applied to the leather, it becomes damp and malleable. Then the leather is applied to the book, working it carefully around the board edges and the head caps so that the finished binding will function well. Rebinding a rare book requires judgment of the correct historic style for the new binding to carry out a treatment enhancing the book's durability and improving its function. Like a machine whose moving parts must be sized and fitted correctly, every aspect of the binding is executed by the conservator to work properly when the book is opened. Once the leather is well adhered, the conservator ties it up around the bands to dry. This ensures good adhesion when the book is opened for reading. With their technical skills and knowledge of material science and the history of books and artworks, supported by the resources of the Conservation Laboratory and its specialized equipment, Columbia's conservators ensure that the library's collections will be well preserved and remain accessible by scholars today as well as in the future.